coldest city in Japan, the snowiest city in Japan. Like this apartment doesn't have an air conditioner at all. They have arrived. People watching this video who are like in Canada or like in the north are like, this is nothing. You guys are weenies. All the buses were stopped. Oh, they're thriving. Woo! It's a little nippy out here, isn't it? I decided to spend my winter break in the coldest city in Japan. <laughs> Definitely feels like the snowiest, coldest city in Japan right now. It's really coming down. What's the high today? Like negative seven? Negative 14. Oh God, negative 14. And who knows what the wind chill is. So this is uh, what we're dealing with here. We're gonna try and stay warm, but we're gonna make the best out of our day. We're gonna go to the zoo, which features a lot of like winter animals because things like polar bears and penguins can really thrive here in this weather. Okay, my hands are cold. I gotta put the camera away. We're gonna get on a bus to the zoo and I'll, ooh, I'll see you guys there. Let's make our waddle our way over to the zoo. Like penguins. <laughs> like penguins, which we're gonna see. I didn't drink any of my coffee or eat any of my penguins. Oh, well let's do that actually. Do you wanna go? Well, let's let's get under something and eat. It says Kirin because there's a giraffe here. <laughs> yep, that's exactly why. <laughs> we're stopping to get a snack. This is from uh, Hokkaido's exclusive Conveni Seiko Mart. So I got a sugar butter pond. It looks pretty good. What did you get? Oh, clustered free Hokkaido cow. Mm. Mm. With an extra hint of snow. Mm. Hi, hey, it's a must. It's a must. My goodness. I can't feel my right hand. Oh, I can't feel anything. We're not really used to the cold because Andrew and I are from the south. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you're oh, from Texas. Yeah, we're all from the south, so this is like insane to us. People watching this video who are like in Canada or like in the north are like, this is nothing. You guys are weenies. Look at the polar bear. All right, where do we go? I got myself a warm drink. They say to go this way. The penguin walk. Oh, we got to watch him walk. So apparently the penguins are going to come out and walk walk through here. They walk a long way. Oh, Alan, you're right. They do have a kitty. <laughs> they have arrived. The boys are rolling up. The sun is starting to come out a little bit. I think it's still snowing a little bit. Maybe it'll stop. I'm gonna push you down the hill. Please do. You can learn a whole bunch of different languages through this, like all the different uh, sounds of the animal. That should be a cube. <laughs> Where? Quack quack. Quack quack. quack Instead quack. of quack. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be That's quack. Funny. That's quack, funny. Quack quack. <laughs> Look at the uh, ice off the building. Next, we're gonna go see the obvious, the polar bear. Because the polar bears, they are thriving right now in all of the snow. <gasps> Look at it! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute! Oh, is he going? Is he gonna go in the water? Oh, they're thriving. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ezo brown bear? So Ezo used to be the old name for Hokkaido, Hokkaido Prefecture. It's its ancient name. So a lot of these animals are, you know, been around since Hokkaido was called Ezo. So this is the Ezo bear. <laughs> what can you tell me about the Ezo bear? Um, it's a bear and it's from Ezo. Imawa soto ni It's currently outside, but I guess when they want to put it inside, this is where it lives. There was a time where uh, your girlfriend, yes. like school got closed down for oh, a while because yeah. bear. This was like a few months ago. <laughs> oh yeah, a few months ago. She texted me saying, hey, there's a bear outside. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just here in Hokkaido. Oh, all right. Yeah, schools get closed if there's like a bear sighting because they don't want kids to walk to school. Uh, when the bears are out? Yeah. In Japan, kids walk to school, so it's like you gotta think about those things. You don't want the bears to, to, to eat the kids. There is no calmness. Cannibalism is. Improved. Improv. Improv.
How do y'all feel about the zoo? Well, the hippo part was interesting. Yeah, the hippo. <laughs> I didn't catch it on camera, but it like projectile, you know what, <laughs> onto the wall. That was enjoyable. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> well, now we take the bus stop back and then we figure out what else to do in uh, Asahikawa. <laughs> Maybe something warmer. <laughs> We came back from the Dolvusen, uh, the zoo, and uh, it's still snowing fairly heavily right now. So Asikawa, the coldest city in Japan, the snowiest city in Japan, uh, also is famous for the ramen. So we'll be getting some Asikawa ramen tonight. It's literally only 4.45, but in Japan, <laughs> the way the time zone is, the sun sets so early. So I'm also going to show you a little bit of Andrew's um, apartment and I'll tell you how he keeps warm in the coldest city in Japan. I hope the camera can pick up the sound because I'm not using my external mic right now, but it's really coming down now. Asikawa has areas like sidewalks that are heated to keep like the snow, like there's just no other way to keep the snow off the, the ground. Uh, even the heated sidewalks, the, the snow is like piling up. And honestly, we have a friend that's supposed to meet us in Asikawa and the uh, the trains have stopped. Usually the snow will stop trains pretty easily in Kanto, but Hokkaido is equipped to have trains that like will go will go through the snow and ice fairly okay, but ugh, oh gosh, it just went in my eye. Right now the, the trains from Sapporo to Asikawa have stopped just because the snow is so bad. One of the things in Asikawa you can do is put snow tires on your bike. Hikawa ramen down the line. We all got shoyu, right? Yep. Yeah, shoyu, which is soy sauce. Soy sauce is the famous flavor of, well, I mean, you can get shoyu ramen all over Japan, but Asikawa is known for shoyu ramen, soy sauce ramen, so that's what you get. Apparently, in Asikawa, you should never get miso ramen because miso ramen is. Yeah, Sapporo ramen. It looks beautiful. There it is. The receipts are kind of interesting at places like this. So we got three shoyu ramen, and so it's like one, two, three, three markings. And then we got the gyoza, three gyoza, so one, two, three markings. And then my friend got an egg, so uh, tamago has one marking. And that's how they figure out what you got. There's not a big menu, which is actually pretty nice for keeping track of how much things cost. So we got back from that ramen dinner and I want to tell you guys how people keep warm here in the coldest city in Japan. I'm going to show you how you stay warm in Hokkaido, the Hokkaiden way. Well, this bad boy can heat up your house at any time. Okay. Well, mostly so, at least in a lot of apartments in Hokkaido, we don't have aircons. Yeah. They're slowly starting to change, but... Yeah. Like, this apartment doesn't have an air conditioner at all. Have yeah. one at all. Yeah. Not one at all. Um... This keeps me warm. However, you don't really want to use it as much as possible because gas be expensive. What's another way to keep warm if you can't use your heater all the time, your gas heater? This thing is the beauty of ingenuity. <laughs> this is called a kotatsu, which many of you might know, may not know, it's up to you. Well, it is a blanket heater table all at the same time. And you pretty much just have a plug into the wall over here. And there's also a switch that you can switch on and off. And on one of the sides, specifically over here, there's a knob that you can uh, control the temperature under here. However, in Asahikawa, which is considered the coldest city in Japan, I leave it on high the whole time. I think one of the things that I've noticed that are in Hokkaido apartments that aren't in other apartments in Japan, at least from what I've noticed, is that there's like a double mm. window here. Yes. So like, you probably can't really see it on the camera, but if I open this, that's not me opening the patio out to the screen. It's another whole window. And this keeps like the, I guess it just keeps, keeps the, the air out, keeps the, the air cold out. air out. So that's It'll, also something in Hokkaido apartments you'll find. Yeah, and something that you want to keep a habit on is, as you can see, we do have a hallway in my apartment here. We keep the door closed just to keep the warm air in and you'll know when anyone goes to use the bathroom or mm -hmm. the shower room, it they bolt in there and bolt back out because it's pretty cold in that hallway. Yeah, it's like that in a lot of Japanese apartments too. Like you'll open the, the door into the hallway and then the hallways are usually kept really cold in the toilet rooms, but the toilets will have like heated seats and stuff. 
but the like washroom and the hallways they're cold but then you step into the room that you actually spend the most time in and uh you'll turn on the heaters and that's not even just a hokkaido thing but like a general mm. thing um in japanese apartments right if you're ever staying like in an airbnb or with uh like a japanese person or someone living in japan with a japanese apartment um yeah expect it to maybe be cold in the winter if you're sleeping in a room and like just layer up like i've got my kigurumi on right now this is saging right yeah now. this kigurumi i mean it's like goofy <clears throat> but it keeps me so warm right yeah. so currently we're waiting um on a train to Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido. We actually didn't expect to have to take a train. We planned on taking a bus, but all the buses were stopped at like four o'clock for the day. Uh, I guess because the roads are really bad and uh, we're, doing, we're having a crazy uh, snowstorm. Yeah, even Hokkaido, which usually has the tools and equipment and means needed to keep things running um even things get a little bit delayed here hopefully we'll be able to get on the train soon we thought we were gonna leave about an hour and a half ago and uh i mean this whole station is like packed with people so hopefully, hopefully we can all get where we're going right all right so we stayed on that platform for about maybe pushing three hours but we did make it to Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido. The snow is definitely not as bad here as it is in Asikawa. Asikawa is just like brutally cold, brutally snowy. Uh, basically, the, what happened was the, the train tracks, the switch was frozen somewhere, and then there was like a literal avalanche in like one of the stations, like maybe snow falling off of something. There's trains going this morning in Sapporo. We're gonna head to the airport and get off of this frozen land back to Kanto. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't turn you off too much from coming to Hokkaido. In fact, I want people to come to Hokkaido even though it's like ridiculously cold and snowy and you might get trapped somewhere. So always have a backup plan. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to push like if you liked it, subscribe if you're interested in my future Japan adventures and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.